Hey everybody, welcome to uh, episode 4 of our Philco 46-1203. In previous videos, I've been calling this a Philco 1230. I keep getting that mixed up, but it's a Philco 46-1203. And what you're looking at here is essentially the completed radio. Now, on this particular radio, I'm not going to take it all apart and shine the chassis and everything. <laughs> Well, I gotta get that chassis clean, and I gotta buy some evapo rust. I may do that at a later date. My goal on this one was to get everything functionally working, and then um, work on the cabinet a little bit, get the cabinet strengthened because it did have a couple of spots that needed to be glued, um, and put a little bit of a finish on it. And I've done that. And so the goal on this one is going to be: let's put this thing back in the case. I've checked everything; all the resistors and everything that needed to be replaced or were out of tolerance were replaced. Everything's good. And this radio actually plays really well. I've done an alignment, and um, I'm getting stations that I don't get on my other radio, so it's pretty cool. I don't know what this is, but it's not English. Tax collectors. I stopped dead ears today. And it's been the uh, Pistol Galatians. We will be doing the Galatian chapter. Mary's partner and a friend that is holy. For Christ. Anyway, so um, so this radio is uh, looking good. We got our turntable working. You saw that in my last um, my last video. So uh, we are now ready to put this thing back in. I do need to do a little bit of de-rusting on the speaker, which I'll do. Uh, I don't need to do that on the video. So we're going to put it in the cabinet, and then we're going to um, we're going to you know work on our next project. I want to I want to show you a little something as well that I picked up on eBay, which is pretty useful. So let me uh, let me get that queued up, and we'll we'll show you. Be right back. And now a public service announcement from John from Arkansas. He needs to say no to crack. Okay, what you're looking at here is a uh, an MX 1258 slash U made by Vector. It actually was made for the department, the Navy Department Bureau of Ships. Um, I don't know the year, but it's a long time ago. And it's essentially a tube socket adapter kit. And what you get inside are tube uh, adapters for various types of tubes. You've got 4-pin, 5-pin, 6-pin, 7-pin, 8-pin, and 9-pin. And the reason why these are important is because you've got little test spots here. So if you want to test the voltages of a, of a uh, tube as you're working on a radio, you know how getting underneath the radio sometimes is difficult to uh, figure out what the voltages are and getting your probes in there. You simply replace the tube with this socket put the tube in and then you've got your uh, test points here and I have it for all the different types of tubes that I could possibly use they even have a Loctal one which I was really shocked about there's Loctal so um, this is a really useful tool useful tool also um, if you do a radio alignment some of the radio alignments that I've seen require that you um, attach your uh, audio your signal generator directly to one of the tubes well I could do that here easily you know with a clip right so um, great set. I saw this on, on eBay. Somebody was selling this whole set here with less of these for $389 or something. And I was like, what the what? I found this one for $79. Bucks, and it included an extra 8-pin octal tube adapter. The uh, octal 8-pins are the most desired. They're going for like 50 bucks each. So I got this entire set for $79. I consider that a steal. Inside the book, inside the case, is a manual. Let's put a light on so you can see it. And it's the original manual that came from uh, Vector Electronics in Los Angeles, California. Let's see if there's a date in here. 1957. Pretty cool. So what they do is they, uh, they give you an overview of, uh, of what's in the, uh, in the case, obviously. It tells you what's there. And... Um, it, the thing I liked about this the most is it gives you a tube chart um, diagram for every type of tube. So, for example, if we look up a look up a 5Y3, which is a fairly common tube, let's see where 5Y3 is. Here's a 5Y3, right here, and they tell us that we should use base 5T on page 4.2. So let's take a look at page 4.2 and see what we're talking about here. Five T, which is right here. So here is the five uh, Y three tube, and it tells us which which pins are the filaments, right here, and it tells us which are the plates and which are the grids. 
So it gives you the pinouts, which is really cool. This uh, this book is available online as well. I've done a search for it, so it's there. Um, so if you, you know if anybody wants to look it up, it's pretty cool. But this is a uh, you know a piece of military equipment um, that uh, I'm sure was used pretty common. As a matter of fact, I was talking to Brendan about this, and he mentioned that when um, when he was working on TVs, at some point they started putting the chassis in a vertical position. And it made it nearly impossible to get voltages behind the chassis when you were working on a television live. So what he would do is take the tubes out and use some of these and put them in and be able to test, test voltages that way. So uh, they, I guess they did have a uh, purpose back then. And of course, the, because these were made under a contract for the Navy, they're made really well. So you really can't destroy these things. They're, they're really, really solid. There's another brand out there outside of Vector. Um, I forget the name of it. It begins with a P. Um, they don't look like they're as well made as these. These definitely look like they're made um, made better. And these are all Amphenol connectors and, um, you know, really, really good stuff here. So if you ever, uh, you know, check eBay out and see one of these sets cheap, I would suggest you pick it up. Even if you just want to sell it and flip it and make some money on it. I mean, I could flip this thing right now for a couple of hundred bucks. I'm not going to do that because I actually want to keep these and use them. But um, but this is a set that's uh, kind of hard to get. So there's bargains out there. So um, the only one I don't have right now is a 9-pin. It did not come with a 9-pin socket. I did find one on eBay for $29 and I ordered it. I got nothing to lose. Then I'll have the complete set. All right? So this is the 7-pin. Uh, and they give you this little uh, little holder here, which is good because it also straightens the... Um, straightens the pin so if you have a, a tube with a bent pin you can put it in here and it'll straighten it out pretty cool all right so i wanted to share that with you let's get back to our radio okay so next thing we're going to do is put this stuff back in the case we're going to add our connectors this is the power for our turntable this is our audio cable we're going to replace it with a uh, shielded cable and uh, we're going to connect this thing back up in the case and we'll put a record on it and see how she plays and we'll be able to wrap up this particular series what we're going to work on next uh, we have our um, our audio generator slash dummy load box. I'm still building that circuit. And then we're going to be working on that uh, console radio that I uh, showed you, which was the Philco 41-280. Um, I've actually taken it out and looked at it, as you saw. And um, it's going to require quite a bit of work. But I've decided, uh, I think I had some comments from, uh, from Phil um, in, over in England. Um, that I should turn it into a Bluetooth set, and I'm going to do that without destroying the circuit. So I am going to build Bluetooth capability into it. It's got a really large speaker in it. I bet you it's going to sound awesome. It's got a you know a push-pull type amp in there. I bet you it's going to sound really good. Um, you know the only danger there is that um, it's it's mono and most music is stereo, but we'll figure that out. That's not a big deal. So um, so we're going to use that as our as our Bluetooth test bed and make sure we we know how to do that. Uh, we are going to do it, uh, you know, independently, obviously. So we're going to put a, a separate uh, switch in place to switch to Bluetooth mode, and all that really does is cut off the radio section and use the amplifier. So, um, so that'll be uh, that'll be stuff coming up. So um, what I'll do is I'll end the video here. When I start my next odds and sods video, I'll show you this all put back together. Um, really, nothing to show you other than it back in the case and playing. So there's no reason to to hold this video up for that. So um, that's about it. I have a gig tonight over in uh, Fleming Island, Florida, Jacksonville. So that'll be fun with my band called Hitting the Red. And we'll be playing some classic rock for a couple hours and jumping around and stuff. So hope everybody has a great day. Stay warm and make sure you wash your hands. There's something we all need to know If you want to keep that healthy glow Remind your friends in courteous terms But spread the word and not the germs Wash your hands, it's the right thing to do It's easy when you only have two Wash your hands, keep them clean, oh yeah Hey, hey, wash your hands Okay, now that that annoying video is over, you guys take it easy. Bye.